advanced grammar. Introduction Consider these facts. English is a worldwide phenomenon. Most of the people learning English at the outset of the 21st century or a substantial number of people living in the United States did not grow up in a home where English was a native language. Also, a substantial number of us did not grow up in homes where English was the native language, but it was spoken in a non-standard manner. Many of us are approaching English as a second language or almost as if it were a second language. Consequently, we study English grammar to understand the way the language works. English is a very flexible language, continuously changing. However, English requires some standard practices. Standardization facilitates effective communication, especially written communication. If we fail to utilize universally understood standards, we risk splintering our language into dialects. Adjective. Adjectives describe or give information about nouns. The form of adjectives does not change. It does not matter if the noun being modified is male or female, singular or plural, subject or object. Some adjectives show that somebody thinks about something or somebody. Nice, horrid, beautiful, etc. Example, Merlin was beautiful. Adjective usage. Adjectives can be used to give your opinion about something. Good, pretty, right, wrong, funny, light, happy, sad, full, soft, hard, etc. Example, she is a pretty girl. Adjectives can be used to describe size, big, small, little, long, tall, short, same as, etc. Example, the big elephant or the short pencil. Adjectives can be used to describe age. Example, she was an old woman. Adjectives can be used to describe shape, round, circular, triangular, square, oval, etc. Example, it was a circular in shape. Adjectives can be used to describe color, blue, red, green, etc. Example, the red flag. Adjectives can be used to describe origin. Example, it was an American flag. Adjectives can be used to describe material. Example, it was a golden bracelet. Adjectives can be used to describe distance, long, short, far, around, start, high, low, etc. Example, she went for a long drive. Adjectives can be used to describe temperature, cold, warm, hot, etc. Example, the night was cold. Adjectives can be used to describe time, late, early, bed, nap, dinner, lunch, day, morning, night, etc. Example, he wakes up early in the morning. Adjectives can be used to describe purpose. Example, she gave them a traveling bag. Comparative adjective. When we compare two things or people, we look at what makes them different from one another. Examples 1. The giraffe is taller than the dog. 2. A jet is faster than an aeroplane. Possessive adjective. Possessive adjectives are used to show ownership or possession. Examples 1. I own this scooter. This is my scooter. 2. You own this book. I presume it is your book. Superlative adjective. 
the superlative is used to say what thing or person has the most of a particular quality within a group or of its kind. Superlative adjectives normally come before any other adjectives. Examples Everest is the highest mountain in the world. High is a short one syllable word. 2. Arguably, Rome is the most beautiful city in the world. Adverbs Adverbs can tell you where, when, how, why, and to what extent something happens. They are often formed from adjectives or nouns by adding the suffix ly, li. To form an adverb from adjectives ending in y, change the y to i before adding the ly. For example, angry becomes angrily, busy becomes busily. To form an adverb from adjectives ending in e, drop the e before adding the ly. For example, feeble becomes feebly, true becomes truly. Some adjectives ending in ly need no changes. For example, heavenly. Some adverbs do not end in ly. For example, fast, hard, straight, etc. Adverbs of degree. These adverbs tell us the strength or intensity of something that happens. Many adverbs are gradable. That is, we can intensify them. To do this, we use adverbs of degree. These include adequately, almost, entirely, extremely, greatly, highly, hugely, immensely, moderately, partially, perfectly, practically, profoundly, strongly, totally, tremendously, very, virtually, etc. For example, 1. He is lazy. He is extremely lazy. In this sentence, extremely shows us how lazy he is. I think he is wonderful. I think he is absolutely wonderful. In this sentence, absolutely shows us how wonderful he is. Adverbs of duration. These adverbs tell us how long something happened. They include briefly, forever, long, shortly, permanently, temporarily. For example, the phone was out of order. The phone was temporarily out of order. In this sentence, temporarily shows us the duration. Adverbs of frequency. Some adverbs tell how often something is done. These include always, constantly, frequently, normally, often, periodically, rarely, regularly, sometimes, etc. For example, I pay my rent every month. I pay my rent monthly. In this sentence, monthly shows us the frequency. Adverbs of manner. Some adverbs tell us how action is or should be performed. For example, the girl ran quickly. In this sentence, quickly modifies the verb ran. Adverbs of place. Some adverbs indicate where something happens. These include abroad, anywhere, here, outside, somewhere, there, underground, upstairs. For example, the children were playing outside. Adverbs of probability. These adverbs tell us the likelihood of something happening. These include certainly, definitely, doubtlessly, maybe, Perhaps, possibly, probably, for example, India will win the match. India 
will certainly win the match. In this sentence, certainly shows us the probability. Adverbs of time. Some adverbs tell us when something happened. These include afterwards, later, now, soon, yesterday. For example, I am going to the shop on Monday. In this sentence, Monday indicates the time. Comparative. Adverbs of comparison are used to show how better or worse a thing does than the other. For example, Monica did her homework more frequently. Superlative. The superlative is used to indicate the greatest degree of being within a group or of its kind. Superlatives can be preceded by the articles. There are only three articles in English, a, an and the. There are two types of articles, indefinite a and an or definite the. Their proper use is complex, especially when you get into the advanced use of English. Quite often, you have to work by what sounds right, which can be frustrating for a learner. We usually use no article to talk about things in general. The doesn't mean all. For example, 1. Books are expensive. All books are expensive. For example, 2. The books are expensive. Not all the books are expensive. Indefinite article. A and an are the indefinite articles. A and an are used before nouns that introduce something or someone you have not specifically known to the person you are communicating with. For example, he is an English teacher. Definite article. You use the when you know that the listener knows or can work out what particular person or thing you are talking about. For example, Harry's bar is the place to go. No article. You do not use an article before nouns when talking in general terms. For example, tennis is expensive. Case. Case is the grammatical function of a noun or pronoun. The three cases in modern English are subjective, he, objective, him, and possessive, his. They may seem more familiar in their old English form, nominative, accusative, and genitive. Most of our cases have been removed and as a result, English is easier than many other languages because nouns and some indefinite pronouns, anyone, someone, everyone, and so on, only have a distinctive case form for the possessive. However, a remnant of Old English is that pronouns have distinctive forms in all three cases and must be used with care. The pronoun cases are simple. Subjective case. Pronouns used as subject. Objective case. Pronouns used as objects of verbs or prepositions. Possessive case. Pronouns which express ownership. Determiners. Determiners are used in front of nouns to indicate whether you are referring to something specific or something of a particular type. Determiners are different to pronouns in that a determiner is always followed by a noun. Therefore, personal pronouns I, you, he, etc. and possessive pronouns mine, yours, his, etc. cannot be determiners. Specific determiners. You use 
a specific determiner. When people know exactly which thing, things or person, people you are talking about. The specific determiners are the definite article, the demonstratives, this, that, these, possessives, my, your, his, her, its, our, their. For example, the black dog is outside the building. These games are a lot of fun. Your train was late. General determiners. You use general determiners to talk about people or things without saying exactly who or what they are. For example, do you know where there is a post office? My brother never does anything good. There is little money. We can't buy a lot of expensive food. Participles. A participle is a word formed from a verb that can function as part of a verb phrase. For example, has been or independently as an adjective. For example, working woman. There are three forms of participle. The present participle, the past participle, the perfect participle. Past participle. A past participle indicates past or completed action or time. It is often called the e ed form as it is formed by adding d or e ed to the base form of regular verbs. However, it is also formed in various other ways for irregular verbs. It can be used to form a verb phrase as part of the present perfect tense. For example, I have learnt Spanish. Learnt is part of the verb phrase have learnt. It can be used to form the passive voice. For example, her hair was well brushed. It can also be used as an adjective. For example, as an adjective, he had a broken arm. Broken is used here as an adjective. Perfect participle. The perfect participle indicates completed action. You form the perfect participle by putting the present participle having in front of the past participle. For example, having done, having finished, having read, having spoken. It can be used to form the passive voice. For example, having improved her communication skills, Mary's promotion prospects were much better. Preposition. Prepositions are a class of words that indicate relationships between nouns, pronouns and other words in a sentence. Most often, they come before a noun. They never change their form regardless of the case, gender, etc. of the word they are referring to. Prepositions are classified as simple or compound. Simple preposition. Simple prepositions are single word prepositions. Across, after, at, before, between, by, during, from, in, into, of, on, to, under, with and without are all single word prepositions. For example, the pen is on the table. Compound preposition. Compound prepositions are more than one word. In between and because of are prepositions made up of two words. In front of and behalf of are prepositions made up of three words. For example, the book is in front of the clock. Preposition of movement. Prepositions can be used to show movement. For example, to, through, across. We use to to show movement 
with the aim of a specific destination. For example, I moved to Japan in 2004. He's gone to the shops. We use through to show movement from one side of an enclosed space to the other. For example, the train went through the tunnel. We use across to show movement from one side of a surface or line to another. For example, she swam across the river. Preposition of place. Prepositions can be used to show where something is located. For example, someone is at the door. They are waiting at the bus stop. I used to live at 20 Ramson Street. Preposition of time. Prepositions can also be used to show when something happened. For example, I start work at 8 a.m. My birthday is on Friday. I started this club in 2001. Direct speech. Saying exactly what someone has said is called direct speech, sometimes called quoted speech. Here, what a person says appears within quotation marks and should be word for word. For example, she said, today's lesson is on grammar or today's lesson is on grammar, she said. Indirect speech. Indirect speech, sometimes called reported speech, doesn't use quotation marks to enclose what the person said and it doesn't have to be word for word. When reporting speech, the tense usually changes. This is because when we, when 